because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth thee. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that, that sweareth by him shall glory, but the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Amen. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We worship you. You are worthy.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Luke chapter 4, starting at verse 16. And it came and came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. Yeah. Can everybody say he went home? He went home. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, Amen. to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In verse 20, he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Amen. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Amen. 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 Lord, I love you, Lord. I appreciate you. I thank you for the 
everything you've done for us. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity we have to gather together and worship you. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity we have to hear your word, Lord. I pray, Lord, that through the word and through the lessons, you speak to our hearts and our minds. Help us to receive. Help us to understand, Lord, so they can mold us and make us more into your image, I pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Not stopped by rejection. That's right. Amen. Nobody likes to be rejected. Amen. <laughs> Nobody likes to be turned away or dismissed. Especially when you are around your home folk. Especially when you're with your family, your friends. Your, your, your childhood chums. <laughs> yeah, you know, as we grow older sometimes, we maybe go our separate ways, but every once in a while, there are opportunities to get back together and, and, and rekindle or to uh, 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 re, relive or rehash the, the, some, some fond memories of some old days, old times together. Everybody likes to do that. Every family gets together on, on the holidays. Right. And, and, and you maybe go through old family memories or pictures or moments in time. Everybody likes that. But there isn't a, any of us in here that amongst our family and friends do we really want to be rejected. Right. Amen. That's the last thing we would think would happen. Those who have moved away from the place where they were raised usually appreciate the opportunity to visit home. Considering his growing status as a popular prophet, you would expect Jesus would receive a warm welcome. At first it appeared the hometown crowd did recognize his status, for they invited him to address the assembly. But... By the time he was finished, their mood had soured considerably. Amen. You know, that is a fear of even some ministry or even pastors who, at what point do they stop being heard? Right. There's always a challenge. Oh, you get you gotta you gotta always reinvent yourself. It's true. Because people get tired of the same old, same old all the time. It, he's gonna step on my toes again. He's always preaching at me. He's always calling me out. Can't he find another topic? I'm tired of that suit. I'm tired of that shirt. He always stands in the same place. It always gets louder. Can't he ever just talk? Mm -hmm. So, the minister of the pastor has to either reinvent himself or move on. Because sometimes, at some point, it gets to be white noise. And at that point is when I, when, when, when I, I, let me know. If my voice is white noise, and you don't even listen to half what I say, and a matter of fact, you may not even, you're in the room, but you don't even hear anything I say. And 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 you're more in in in, in through enthralled with the bug that flies in the room. 
It's, I'm amazed at how quickly a, a, a church bug can draw people's attention. That means I lost it. Uh, there's one on this screen. It's, it's walking on a wall behind you. <laughs> I wish we would become so enthralled with the presence of God that we would be that open to watching for the angels and watching for the presence of God moving into place. Rather, a bug draws our attention yes. quicker than anything. Amen. Jesus' former neighbors were willing to accept him as the son of Joseph and Mary, but recognizing his status as the son of God was more than they were willing to consider. I actually find myself in good company here. Even Jesus took, got hit a point where he wasn't even accepted. Right. And Jesus couldn't, couldn't even win over his family and friends. Man. Right. Then, then I guess I'm in your company. Yeah, amen. But at least he had enough sense to close the book and say, okay, I'm done. <laughs> had every, everybody in here wishes that that, might, that was the length of my sermons. <laughs> but instead of the congratulating the hometown boy on what a great job he had done preaching that day, the audience was filled with wrath and sought to throw Jesus from a nearby hill. I'm so glad we don't have hills high enough around here that would actually hurt me. Sometimes the people we love the most will not accept our decision to follow God's call. His anointing sometimes means foregoing acceptance from others, including those closest to us. They fail to recognize what God is doing in our lives, choosing instead to see us as we once were. You ever notice that even yourselves? You know, you've been living for God for years. You get around your family and friends and they seem to, you know, not accept you, your new person, who you are. They don't understand the change that has happened in us. We, we, no matter how hard we try to explain it, they, they can't understand it. Did anybody ever heard? I'm sure all of us have heard it, and I've said it more recently than, than a long time ago, is familiarity breeds contempt. Yeah, right. The more people are familiar with us, the more contempt they show towards us. Right. Yeah. It's easier. Mm -hmm. it, especially when, especially when they, they mentally elevate you up here then they just can't wait to watch you to fall mm -hmm. take a bad step mm -hmm. to then why do they do that because they because this is what happens people in the world naturally feel threatened and they they look at that and they oh okay then we find kind of level the playing field there you know but yet i can actually uh you call yourself a christian look what you're doing mm -hmm. Or look what you did. Mm -hmm. Or they can't accept you as a Christian because of something you did a long time ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they can't seem to forget it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even though it's been years. Even though decades have gone by. They see you and all they can think of is that snotty nose brat that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ran around calling people's names and pulled on pigtails mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. huh didn't mean tricks or didn't mean things to people picked on people and that's all they can remember it seems like they get to the point to where they can only remember so much and I realize this
their memory is it probably more than likely attached, especially if it's something you have, somebody you haven't seen in a long time, is more attached to the you that they remember that they saw last, right. rather than the you that they see now. Because the biggest transformation that's taken place in my life took place after I left my hometown. And so the last thing people remember of me isn't so pleasant. So you go back and they, oh, you're back. I remember. What? That's been like years ago. But I remember. You can't forget that? No, because guess what? It wasn't resolved before you left. Right. See, that's one thing we got to understand. Sometimes, and that's just a side note, and I'm not saying Jesus failed at this by no means, but this is where we fall short, is we haven't fixed our problem. See, we think running away, let a few years go by, and then going back, people will forget. Right. Rather than facing it before you leave, Resolving it and then leaving. Right. Uh -huh. So we leave unfinished business. So running away from our past before resolving it with other people, especially if it involved hurting other people, because mm -hmm. all they're going to remember is the hurt that you caused. Right. And if you haven't resolved it, you could never find favor in their eyes again until that's resolved. Right. That's just relationship 101. Because we now, as Christians, live a, a life of forgiveness. Right. And even though we've forgiven them, they don't understand the process that it took to get us to the point where we're at, to where we can go back and look at it and go, I remember, I remember what you did. But that was how many years ago? Still. Why? Because our actions put scars and marks on people that when they see us, then all of a sudden those old wounds are open up. Right. That's just some little brief psych psychology information just for each and every one of us in here. Mm -hmm. That sometimes that it's best that if, you're, if, you are, if you are in a situation where you're doing something or you probably did something you shouldn't have done, that before you leave that you resolved it. Because guess what? The next time you see each other, they're just going to remember what pain you caused them. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about Jesus. Jesus, Jesus didn't start his ministry in Nazareth. So the ministering Jesus, they didn't know. Nor did they see until he came back. And then they knew him as the carpenter's son. Who does he think he is? One day he's pounding nails, the next day he's, he's healing people. Who does he think he is? God or something? It's kind of hard to admit to people that you're God if they watch you grow up from birth. Yeah. Imagine it. You say, you're, I used to babysit you. Now you should change your diapers. And now you're trying to tell me you're God? Yeah. You just listen to you cry incessantly because I was late feeding you. And all of a sudden you walk in and say, I'm back! Fully fulfilling a completely different role. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> You're a pastor. Yeah. Really? I remember when. Well, I remember that too. But it's just a memory. 
That person is long gone. But to them, it's not. We gotta keep that in mind. New Testament believers must be on guard against becoming desensitized to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Hearing God's voice should get easier as, as years go on. But in some cases it gets more difficult. Why? Because we we maybe heard the voice so long that we've learned how to drown it out. The Apostle John warned the members of the church of Laodicea that they had become comfortable and did not realize they were wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Oh. You know, we may not be who we were, but yet we got to understand something. It's not how I see myself. It's how God sees me. And it's a never-ending process to better myself, not for my own sake, but for my relationship with God's sake. Amen. Amen. And I need to understand that if it wasn't for God, I could be that old person I once was. Spirit challenged them to anoint thy eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. We need to see ourselves for who we really are. If it wasn't yeah. for God's grace, and if it wasn't for God's mercy in our lives, we would be nothing. So no matter how hard you we think we worked on bettering ourselves. We can't better ourselves the way God needs us to better ourselves. The only way we can do it is through the power of the Holy Ghost, which is why this is one of the aspects of the Holy Ghost that He gives to us. That's one of the aspects. Not only is it to make us closer or to have a greater relation with God, but it's also to give us realization, to give us the power to be Christians. We all love the word power. But I like, I like to replace that word power with the ability to be Christians. Right. Wasn't for the Holy Ghost in our lives, we wouldn't have the ability to be Christians. Right. Amen. Within ourselves. Why? Because the Bible says you and I, we're naturally sinful. Right. Right. Our flesh always wants to do bad. Right. Mm -hmm. And without the Holy Ghost keeping it in check, it would do bad. Right. I don't know how people can say without the Holy Ghost that they're a good person. What are they basing it upon? <laughs> Who is defining the word good? I know for a fact it's not God. Because the Bible indicates that the only way a person can get good is by getting God. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost in your life, with the evidence of speaking out of the tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance, then my goodness, there is no hope for us to be able to even come close to even being able to live good enough. Let, let me let me 
Let me point something out. Good is one level up from bad. So when people say, I'm a good person, I'm saying, okay, that's fine. I'm glad you're a good person, but the Holy Ghost makes me the best person. So you want to settle for good? There's two other steps. There's better and best. So, next time somebody says, but I'm a good person, look at them and say, well, but through the power of the Holy Ghost, you could be the best person. Right. Why would you want to settle for good? Uh -huh. yeah. that, 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 in my book, is when a teacher tells their student that's satisfactory. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Amen. Woo! I have report cards full of satisfactories. Which gave me the indication that I would never ever be anything better than satisfactory. So no matter how hard I tried, it was easy for the teachers just to write S in that elementary school. And they didn't realize, hey, I'm being I'm being I'm being really thoughtful about my about this pupil. Everything he does is satisfactory. We're supposed to say, excuse me, but if you put satisfactory in the form of a letter grade, that's just passing. That would be like in the low C's. Maybe a D. Mm -hmm. Your work is satisfactory. It's enough to pass you, but it's not enough to excel you. Mm -hmm. Which the first part of the word excellent is excel. Mm -hmm. So good. I'm a good person. Well, God makes us the best person. Yes. Amen. So without God, you can only get good. Amen. You can only reach good. Amen. And good is by your own definition. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. Because God's definition is best. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. God doesn't make me a good person. He makes me the best person that I can be. That's just a play on words. I know I've said that before, so you guys drowned me out in about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> Familiarity with God's word and ways that ironically cause us to miss out on the work he wants to do through us and in us. Amen. At first, Jesus' synagogue sermon was well received by the people of Nazareth. They wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. Their attitude changed when he reminded them of, the mo of a moment in Elijah's life. God sent the prophet Elijah to minister to a widow in Zarpath. Zarpath during a time of famine. Now get a load of this. And this is something I never picked up on. I thought this would make a great sermon. And I thought maybe I'd skip this paragraph because I'd want to preach it one day. But now that I'm reading it to you, I, I can't now preach it. This woman was not a member of the nation of Israel. Okay? So while the nation of Israel was in famine, Elijah went to this woman who was not of the nation of Israel. And what did he do? Because of her faith, she received a continuous supply of food. Yes. Yes. Amen. While God's children were in a famine, this lady who was not of the Israel, Israelite, Israelite faith is getting food from heavenly supplier. 
Why? Because God's people have rejected the Lord and His prophet during this time. So God worked outside the boundaries of the nation of Israel. So a Gentile received miraculous provision while faithless Israelites went hungry. <clears throat> if nothing more speaks volumes to us, that should. Yes. Amen. Uh-huh. Yep. When a Gentile can have enough faith in God and enough faith in the prophet to have her covered filled while all of Israel is starving. Right. Amen. That should speak volumes to the children of Israel yes. and how they accepted God and how they rejected the prophet. Yes. Amen. Oh. I, I, I'll tell the church something. If for nothing more than to put his church on notice, God made you bless a Gentile church. Yes. Just to put his church on notice and say, hey, I was in your presence and you rejected me. Hey, I sent my prophet to you and you rejected him. So I'm going to go somewhere else. They may not have the truth, but they do have an attempt and they do yearn. So, body of Christ, we need to pay attention because God's not above that. Amen. Amen. So, the slap in the face became, came from because he read from Elijah's portion, the prophecy, when he, read to his, when he read to them. And it was a reminder to them of this very point. Elijah lost faith in the eyes of the children of Israel because Elijah used his area of influence with God to bring about a blessing through this Gentile's faith. Even if it was a limited faith. God honors faith. Amen. No matter who has it. Right. Hmm. That's how my lack of faith could provide for me manna where somebody's min minuscule misunderstanding of faith could provide them steak and potatoes. Mm -hmm. See, we have a tendency to believe that that doesn't doesn't God know who I am? And the Bible said, I've done this in your name, I did this in your name, and the Lord says, I, still, I don't know you. Some of us may find ourselves fooling ourselves in believing that we have that kind of power and authority based on, hey, just because I go to church A, B, C, or D, God knows who I am. I can I get by on my laurels, and when the trumpet blows, I'm ready to go. And God's saying, hold it. So Jesus picked up that portion of scripture from Elijah's. While Jesus' own people refused to believe in him. So outsiders often readily accepted his claims. Jesus later said of a certain Roman. So remember, you remember that story, right? What did that story say? 
Even though the, his people rejected him, he was still able to do miracles. But it wasn't among his family and friends. Right, right. Mm -hmm. They missed out on an experience. Because they go look past the fact that he's the carpenter's son. Right. The one I used to babysit. Right. Mm -hmm. It's so funny. I go, there's a couple of churches that I go to quite frequently. And there's ladies there in, 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 that, in that church. And every time I see them, they're, they're all sisters. Okay, I, I don't know how many how many of them. I'm probably I, I don't remember how many. One of those were, were my age, and every every one of them were older. Okay, at one point in our life, while I was a baby, they babysat me. At one point or another. And I had my favorites among the sisters, and, and it was always we could call up there, and there was like a, they, they had a passel of, of kids, and a passel of girls. And if one wasn't available, then another one surely was. And that wasn't available, then somebody else. So it was like, well, who's coming to watch us today? And then we would say, oh, okay, cool. And so now I see them, and they're like, oh, they, yeah. <laughs> but we have a friendly friendship. I don't like the name. I don't like being called Davy because that's a little boy's name. <laughs> but they all know me as Davy. They all know me as good because I've never been their pastor for one thing. So they see me, they, 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 they see me as, as Davey, which is fine. I, I love them. What, I mean, it, we had so much fun. And it's, and it's cool to know that, you know, that we could still. But those are sometimes, you know, but it goes to what I'm, I'm saying here, how, how sometimes we can, they, 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 they don't see us what we are. They see us for who we used to be, or what we used to be. I think they see me beyond the little boy that they used to run around chase after in the house because I would never listen. Nah, not me. I was an angel. <laughs> and for those of you who don't believe me, I was. Trust me, I was a good child. And not the best child, or a better. I, I, was the, I was a good child. The horn tells your halo? Oh, yeah. But I was a child of 70, so my long hair covered the horns, too. <laughs> So Jesus' experience mirrored Elijah's. So outsiders often readily accepted his claims. Jesus later said of a certain Roman centurion who was a Gentile, remember this, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Does that mean that centurion had this huge amount of faith? Or did it mean he just had faith, where the Israel did not have any faith? Jesus' earthly ministry testified to the fact that God's promises are not constrained to national borders or limited to a certain ethnicity. Jesus was willing and remains willing to respond to anyone who exercises faith. Amen. Peter declared that God's promises were for all that are far off Listen to this. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Remember that scripture? Yeah. 
remember that? That, that? that came right after. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And then he's being sent to the Gentile house, and he's saying, i got to make sure that this is God. Remember that little portion of scriptures? Peter declared that God's promises. So Peter did not even believe his own words because he later struggled to accept the idea that God would fill Gentiles with the Holy Spirit. The truth finally hit him, causing Peter to declare of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and walketh righteousness, worketh righteousness, is accepted with him. You know what? As a pastor, I gotta be ever watchful. But as, as, as someone who grew in the church, I don't know about you, but it was a full-time job just trying to keep myself on the straight and narrow. I didn't have time to worry about what others were doing around me. And as hard as I might try, I might, I might try, to, try to maybe pattern myself after somebody but the point is, even those people, we could, if we're not careful, they could lead us astray. Right. Or we could look at somebody else and we could get a wrong spirit just because we hold ourselves more righteous than them. Well, shame on us. And if you don't understand that, the Word of God, what does the Word of God call that? Self-righteousness. There is nobody but the God of heaven can declare you or I righteous. It's a full-time job keeping myself on the straight and narrow. And even me spending my whole time trying to do it, I still have a difficult time. Let alone if I look to others, who all of a sudden I could easily go astray if I find myself not being more cognitive of my own path if I'm more worried about somebody else's path. So what am I trying to get us to understand? It is God that worketh righteousness. Am I saying to not even, that's not, I'm not saying don't try. I am saying we, if we were, if we spend all, spend the time focused on ourselves that we spend worrying about somebody else and their walk, mm -hmm. then we'd be better off. Somebody steps off the path to the right and we go, oh, look at them. At the same time, you're stepping off the path to the left. Right. You're both off the path. Doesn't matter whether it's right or it's left. But the point is, when we get so concentrated on what somebody else is doing, we lose sight of the path that we're on. Peter nearly allowed his cultural and religious biases to keep him 
from participating in one of the most significant moments in the New Testament. The first outpour of the Holy Spirit on Gentiles. Likewise, we must not let the limitations of our own thinking constrain God's work in our community. If we do, God will likely bypass us in favor of a Cornelius or a Naaman. Mm -hmm. How many of you ever want to be remembered as someone I used to just know a while back? It's <laughs> acquaintance of mine from years ago. We need to be careful. Sometimes we can be so far off the path that we think that we're on the path. Right. I love the bumper sticker. That's how I feel sometimes. I'm so far behind, I think I'm leading. Yeah. Don't follow me, I'm lost too. Yeah. <laughs> Some people are content with merely hearing God's word proclaimed, while others have the faith to see it fulfilled. I don't, don't, I don't want any of us in here to be just hearers of the word only. Right. Amen. Amen. If you can walk in the door and recite back to me every word that I said this morning. Hey, you know what? I'd even give you a, I'd even give you a satisfaction if you could give me 10 minutes of what I said this morning. Hey, I'll give you satisfaction if you can sum everything I said up in one sentence. I'll give you satisfaction for that. But I'm more interested in what did you do when you left? You know, too many times, and this is something that, that I'm, I've been I'm more stressed this year. In the past, if we're not careful, we find ourselves waiting for opportunities to happen. And I'm telling us this year, we need to go and create the opportunities. Right. Amen. The Bible says for us to compel them. Compel involves action. Amen. Where we initiate the action. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. That's what we're talking about here this morning. We're talking about not just being hearers, but being doers also. I'm glad that we can hear. I'm glad that we can recite back. I'm glad that we can that we can that we can remember something that was said, but I'm more interested in what we do with it. That's where I'm that's what I'm concerned with. What do we do with it? Did we just put it on the shelf next to our Bible once we walked out the door? Or do we leave it sitting on the pew with our Bible once we walk out the door? Not to be picked up till the next time we go to service. Oh, there that's that's where that's where the pastor. 
That's where, yeah, okay. Faith makes the difference. Are we satisfied with only hearing about what, what God can do? Or do we have the faith to see God's word become reality? We enjoy stories that come from our missionaries and the way to hear how God is working in the mission. We love that. How, how thousands of people are, are being saved at one time. At one service, we 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 run the aisles about that. But at what point do we say, you know what, that's great, but I want it to happen here. Yeah. Amen. That's great too. But then you talk to the missionaries, you find out that they've dedicated every day. To prayer, to fasting, to talking to people, to 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 um, knocking on doors, to witnessing every day. Well, that, 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 that's what they're there to do. That's what we're here to do too. Those words of Elijah that Jesus shared with his home folk is for us too. We were sent to minister to the brokenhearted. To open the blind eyes. To set at liberty them that are captive. That's our job. So Luke recorded that the people of Capernaum were astonished at the preaching of Jesus because his word was with power. And after seeing him cast the devil out of a man in their synagogue, they remarked in amazement, what a word is this? With, for with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits and they come out. And Jesus clearly expected New Testament believers to follow in his footsteps and exercise the same authority he exercised. Ooh, I don't get any name on that. Unless. <laughs> Brother Bush, turn your hearing up so I can hear it. <laughs> He promised to baptize believers with the Holy Spirit and doing, I'm sorry, Jesus clearly expected New Testament believers to follow in his footsteps and exercise the same authority he exercised. Yeah. Amen. He promised to baptize believers with the Holy Spirit and doing them with power. Yeah. Yeah. The Holy Spirit would be accompanied by miraculous signs including power over demonic spirits, miraculous deliverances, supernatural protection, and healing. Amen. Let me also remind us, as I discussed with us a while back, that signs, miracles, and wonders are not just centered around miraculous healings uh -huh. and miraculous deliverances. A sign, a miracle, and a wonder is just as simple as someone getting the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Why? Because they speak in the tongues as a sign. Right. Not to the speaker, but to the, the, hearer. the hearer. So it's a sign. Amen. That's right. The receiving of the Holy Ghost is a miracle. That's right. Amen. Amen. And I don't know about you, it's left me in wonder. So please, yes. don't think just because we haven't seen healings, people coming in wheelchairs and walking out. I'm not saying God can't do it and God won't do it, but those are not the only signs, miracles, and wonders that God works. Amen. 
When in the New Testament church, God works those signs every day. Someone comes to the altar, repents of their sin, and God fills them with His Spirit. Amen. 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 And I also want us to understand, too, maybe each of us in here maybe don't have a miraculous... Hey, God, heal me from a death. But you do have God filled me with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Those are on the same level, folks. Yeah. Yeah. You are a walking miracle. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yep. Yeah. It's just as miraculous, if not more so, because the Word of God tells us that that's the greatest miracle. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, folks, we have been in the midst of signs, miracles, and wonders this whole time. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And the only way that they're continue is when we start taking and acting within the authority that has been given to us. Jesus clearly expected New Testament believers to follow in his footsteps and exercise the same authority he exercised. Those supernatural signs were intended to confirm that the authority of the believers. We don't have to have our shadow fall on somebody and they get up off their, their, their bed and walk to say, man, but grab it somebody by the hand who has come to, or you have gone to them and say, you know what, I see, I see pain on your face. I see hurt in your life. Folks, they are everywhere. And we can no longer be ignorant of that. When you walk in, even in a Walmart, and you see somebody stand, you can tell that they're not in physical pain, but they're in an emotional pain, you can tell. Yeah. It is our duty to go up to them and say, you know what, I can see you're in pain. I can see there's something going on in you. It's not physical. And I've been sent here to help you. You have just opened a door that they had never thought would ever get open. They just went there to get something to Did anybody ever heard of of of, of what what do they call it? stress eating? You you eat things when you're under stress that you probably normally wouldn't eat. And you, and you just, you, you find yourself, all you want to do is maybe jump up on a sofa and sit down with a bag of chips. <laughs> it's just a curse. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just something that, I'm not saying that's what she does, but they always have chips in their house. So I just grab that. But sit down with a bag of chips and just eat the whole bag because you're feeling miserable about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Or ice cream. Another one of those. What's that? Chocolate chip cookies. You know what I'm talking about. All of us have been there at some point or another. You know when somebody, you see the signs. Why? Because we can, we've seen them in ourselves. Trust me. The same misery that they show on their faces at times are the same misery we show on our face. But we have an answer. We have a hope. We have, yeah. we have something to cling to where they don't. Yes. And it's our job when we see that to take what we have and give it to them.
God closes some doors, but while other doors close because people are faithless and disobedient. But we must not let the disappointment of a closed door stop us from walking through an open door. Folks, you know what? I'll be, I'll be brutally honest. There are going to be people up there you're going to come in contact with and they're more comfortable with their misery than they are with ever getting delivered from it. I, I, I understand this. They thrive in misery. But also keep in mind too is their whole point of, of them thriving in ministry is attention. Yeah. And if they don't w want what you got, then walk away. Because you're giving them what they want. You're giving them the attention. But it's not going to go anywhere because all they want is the attention. And so therefore they manifest misery to get attention. They don't want to be saved from it. Because it's the only way they get attention. Right. Why? Because it's it, it's brainwashed into them. Okay? See the signs. So go look for another open door. Just trust me. Where one closes, another one will open. And it may not be the person you're talking to. It might be the person that walked by you as you were talking to that person. Right. Yeah. You never know. You just never know. That's why we got to take the opportunity whenever it arises. Because we never know when God is presenting us with an open door or right. not. Amen. Our anointing does not come from our neighbors, our families, or our friends. Amen. They have nothing to do with it. It is not based on the acceptance of others. Our anointing comes from God. And if he has called and anointed us, then we must carry on with the mission he has given us to complete. Right. It is our mission to reach the lost. It is not their mission to reach us. Yes. What am I trying to get? Sometimes we wait for them to open the door, and if they don't open the door, then we can stand on our laurels and say, oh, I wasn't given the opportunity to witness right. today. It's not their job to reach toward us. It is our job to reach towards them. Yeah. <clears throat> Rip the door open? Yes. If you must. Because guess what? People are brainwashed into believing that there is no answer for their situation. And if, if there is an answer, it's not by godly means. It's by other means. Amen.